For this tutorial video, we'll be working through a dimensional analysis problem or stoichiometry problem using dimensional analysis where we have moles uh, given and we want to see how many moles come out of the reaction. So the first step in doing any stoichiometry problem is determining what the chemical balance chemical equation is. Remember when you're doing this, you're ignoring the numbers that are given and simply focusing on the chemicals that are involved. So we seem to have, um, and I'm going to change this actually to be C2H6. So it seems that we have as one our reactant C2H6, and it tells us that we're uh, reacting the C2H6 with oxygen to produce CO2 and H2O. Okay. Again, as I said, we'll ignore these numbers. Uh, this is simply what we have in the lab. It does not determine the recipe. But we do need to see that it's balanced. And when I look at this here, um, I know that it's not balanced because I already have two carbons. On this side, only one carbon here. I've done this balance quite a few times. I won't have that be the focus uh, for this lesson. So I know this is the balanced equation. Once I have that determined, I place my, my apologies, I place my chemicals into the BCA table and including those coefficients. All right. So the next step is identifying what I have. So I am told that I have 4.6 moles of C2H6 and I have 3.17 moles of H2O. So I have to figure out which one of these is going to run out first. So the way that I do it is I look at my equation and I see that for every two moles of C2H6, I need seven moles of O2. That's more than triple the amount of O2 that I need. So when I have this, um, 4.6 is uh, 3.17, triple the amount of 4.6, and the answer is no, I have too little of it. All right, so um, I know that I do not have enough uh, O2, which means that all of that O2 is going to be used up, and I can only make as much CO2 and H2O as I have O2, and so we'll see how much of the C2H6 will be used, okay? So in order to do that, I need you to do that using dimensional analysis. And so just as a reminder, you're going to take your limiting reactant, okay? So you always start with your limiting reactant because you can only make as much of uh, your reaction as the least ingredient you have. So I have 3.17 moles of O2. Couple of things I want you to notice. Remember, I'm not adding the seven here. I'm just simply saying moles of O2, okay? That's my limiting reactant. And now what I need to do is set up the equivalency uh, fraction of uh, C2H6 to O2. So I write a note to myself. I know that I have for every two moles of C2H6, uh, seven moles of O2 are going to react. So I can cre create fractions of these. Two moles C2H6 over seven moles of O2, or I can do seven moles of O2 over two moles of C2H6. So I can use either one of these. Now the trick is, is making sure that these things cancel out. So I have moles of O2 as a numerator. I want it to cancel out so it converts to moles of C2H6. So if I have moles of O2 as a numerator, I want to make sure that I have moles of O2 as a denominator, which means that this is the one that shows moles of O2 as a denominator. I use the seven moles of O2 and then place over those seven moles two moles of C2H6. I determine whether or not I did it correctly by canceling things out. And when I do this calculation onto, on my calculator, this works out to be 0 0.91 moles of C2H6 being used up. So that means of the 4.6 moles that I have, only 0 0.91 moles will be used up. And this means that leftover, if I do my calculations, it turns out to be, let's see, 0 0.91, it works out to be 
six, nine moles left over. All right. Over here, of course, we used it all up. None of that is left over. Now we have to determine how much is made. Again, everything is driven by the limiting reactant, and that's why we always start with the limiting reactant. We have, again, our limiting reactant being 3.17 moles of O2. We now need to convert our moles of O2 to CO2. Again, I set up my equivalency fraction. I know for every 7 moles of O2, I will produce 4 moles of CO2. That means I can either write it as this, fraction where 7 moles O2 is on top and 4 moles of CO2 are on the bottom or I can flip them where I have 4 moles of CO2 on top and 7 moles of O2 on the bottom. Again I want to cancel it out so which one do I choose? If I have moles of O2 in the numerator I want to make sure I have moles of O2 in the denominator. So in that case 4 moles of CO2 is over 7 moles of O2, they cancel out, and if I do my calculation with this one, this should work out to be 1.82 moles of CO2 are produced. So remember we started with no moles because the reaction hadn't happened, and now after, while the reaction is happening, I have produced 1.82 moles of CO2, and I'm left with the 1.82 moles of CO2. Okay, let's do that for the last one as well. Again, I start with my limiting reactant, 3.17 moles of H, excuse me, of O2. And in this case, I want to set up the equivalency based on my periodic, uh, excuse me, on my equation. And I know that looking at the equation, for every 7 moles of O2, I need 3 moles of H2O, or better said, three moles of H2 are, are produced. That means I can set up the fraction to either be seven moles O2 over three moles H2O or three moles H2O over seven moles O2. Again, I need to cancel out my moles of O2. So for that reason, I want to make sure that I have O2 as my denominator. That works out to be seven moles of O2 over 3 moles of H2O. These cancel out, and my answer works out to be 1.36 moles of H2O. So that is how much is produced when I have just 3.17 moles of oxygen. And that ends our stoichiometry exam.